by Dr. Devi Prasad. Uh, Devi is heads of R&D department here at Bogosov, and he's going to talk about CSL swimming and animations. Uh, so just one announcement: uh, we have two sessions left. So after Dr. Devi Prasad, there is uh, Siddharth Kurvila, and after that we're going to be breaking for lunch. So Bogosov has arranged for lunch in the canteen. Uh, so please don't leave. You can stay here. We'll be around for a while. So if there are any questions, you can hang out with us and talk to us about anything you want to talk about. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, after hearing uh, Sunil's introduction, and it was great that he brought up certain things about JavaScript, and uh, in fact, he mentioned stack sheets also. Uh, let's, let's have a look at what browsers can do with CSS, how they really complement uh, JavaScript. So Sunil's theme was that you know JavaScript is everywhere. Really JavaScript uh, can make things portable, can present everything. But the basic idea behind CSS is to separate style from content. So my idea is I'm a little uh, confused at this moment, uh, to be honest with you, because I would be going back and forth on many things. Uh, I want to uh, I want to have some kind of you know, uh, hands on with uh, uh, Sunil was mentioning Inspector Man. So I was thinking I'd go there, edit the content, edit uh, CSS, and then show how uh, you know, the whole thing reflows and so on. So let me see how comfortable I'll be standing here. Right? So uh, excuse me if there is a little bit of jarring, you know, when I go back and forth with these things. Okay. So If you see the first few slides here, uh, it looks gimmicky, it looks childish, of course. Uh, but then what's happening here is not is that uh, this whole presentation is going on the web, on the cloud, right? So I'm using Google Docs and I'm using the Docs presentation. So you saw a small animation there that wasn't done with you know any JavaScript or anything. So, what's of interest you know, today? So, what we would like to do is today to take a look at what CSS can, uh, how CSS can help us organize content and representation. And then, how browsers do CSS. <laughs> this is also important. And as the icon showed there, I am interested in two browsers. One is uh, Google's Chrome and another uh, Firefox. For various reasons, both philosophical and practical. Right? Uh, Google Chrome because uh, I haven't included Apple Safari here because I do not use a Mac uh, and this is something that works on Ubuntu or Windows also. So for people uh, who are familiar with both of these browsers, we will be taking a look at the way these browsers do CSS uh, going through some examples. So feel free to interrupt me, feel free to ask questions. So it would be more fun if you have questions and you try to answer. <coughs> so that is our interest story, right? I hope you understand. So, uh, as Sunil was saying, modern web browsers are very complex, right? So he was mentioning a few things about uh, how JavaScript runs everywhere and uh, some of the few things with browsers. The basic Basic thing is that there are too many parts working within the browser today. They are complex for various reasons. They are not complex just like that. By design, they are very complex because they do many things. Browsers are like operating systems these days. Right? They really have a virtual sandbox, a virtual machine, which runs all these kinds of things. So HTML5, CSS3, <coughs> JavaScript, and for those who like games or for looking at your technologies, you know, web cheer, and of course, security is always a concern. So, if you look at these things, people use browsers for various things, starting from entertainment, just watching the web, seeing content on the web, to even transactions that we do, business that we do on the browsers. Right? So, if you look at it carefully, browsers are multi faceted, so they are used to do 100 things. Obviously, they have to be large, they have to be complex. 
because they cater to different needs, different requirements of people. So what's happening is that there are too many parts that interact. So they are not, you know, they are not autonomous, they are not independent of each other. So when I do HTML5, I or uh, I don't just do HTML5, right? I need, I do need to use CSS, or I use those things for some to solve some problem. Therefore, I have to combine many of these things together. That's what makes browsers complex. And similarly, uh, the basic theme today is content. Basically, how do we how do we organize it? How does CSS help us do that? Uh, although the original title was saying CSS3 animation design and implementation, I actually changed the title because I just said, okay, how do we render CSS? How do browsers do that? And what can we do with CSS? So the content essentially. Uh, the content has to be interactive, portable, shared, and it should be present, right? All these mobile phones and all the new uh, requirements. So what happens is we need to have a mechanism wherein we can do these things uh, from within the browser. Can JavaScript alone do it, or should JavaScript alone be doing it, or only JavaScript be doing it, or do we have other ways of doing these things? So, uh, if you look at the past models of how browsers would render a page, so it's an interesting thing. You put up HTTP, HTTP request, you get back HTML. That's a basic model that all of us have in our mind, and it gets rendered, right? And you have movies, you have video, audio, images, and and then they show. So this was the old model of how web pages would be. So you essentially go to the network, make a network request, you get a stream, and then you look at the stream, pass it, it which is HTML, right? And for all those, I, I suppose many of you are from computer science and you know, people have at least some introduction to how compilers are assembled. So essentially a DOM tree is constructed and then it goes on because as a part of the construction of the DOM tree, when a web page is when a web page arrives at the browser, the browser starts looking at it and it starts parsing JavaScript, HTML in it. As a as a process of parsing it, there may be changes to the DOM tree or So this is a highly recursive thing. It's like that process may never stop, right? But most of the pages are not written that way, so you'll never see things happening that way. So uh, this is an iterative process that goes on and on. Then there's a fixed point. And you end up with a DOM. This is a typical model that we think of. Let me just switch. So, as I said, you know, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry if there is a jarring here on the, when I switch slides. I just want to show you an example here. Yeah, let's let's take a look at uh, Smash and Magazine's web page, right? Uh, this is more to the point as to what I'm talking about. So this is a full page thing which shows a lot of sidebars and content and the search and things like that. What we do is we um, start slightly resizing the page, right? As we start resizing the window, then you can see the way content flows. So when I resize the window, I am not really making a network call, right? I want you to understand this point. So we are not making a new request to the server to get the page, get the content. The content is the same that is shown on the browser's window. But as we shrink or as we resize the window, you can see that some content disappears and some content, some some items, some elements on the web page are you know reflow. They are they are replaced. They are moved across. This is pretty interesting. Not all web pages, not all websites behave, uh, not all you know pages behave this way, right? Look at the search bar; it just changes its appearance, changes its place, and some ads go and things like that. Look at the web page of uh, List Upon, which Celine was mentioning. So if you look at it, nothing much happens, right? So the content remains the same, and then. Uh, scroll bars so it shows that the content is full but you can scroll across 
But if you look at this smashing magazine's content, you know, the, the, way it, uh, the way it works is that uh, you don't get a horizontal scroll bar. Interesting. Okay, if the same page is shown on a uh, Firefox browser, then uh, there is a nice little thing here which we can go to the developer, you know, uh, go to the developer console and say responsive design. So this gives us a way to look at our web pages depending on the resolution. Right? I change the resolution. How, do, how does my web page look like? Look at the way smashing magazine's page resizes neatly. Right? This might this might be on a mobile phone. Right, the, the screen looks like more like a small handheld device thing. Uh, just as I showed you, when we manually were moving the, you know, resizing the window, and I did this. Similarly, you can, you know, you can change the, maybe this is a landscape mode or a portrait mode. You can use different sizes, and you can see how this page really reinforces. This is the CSS trick. You know what's happening inside this was not JavaScript, it wasn't HTML, it was CSS. <laughs> the style, uh, CSS stands for uh, cascade, Cascading Style Sheets. So they are called style sheets because you are going to style your content using these specifications. So how does a CSS declaration look like? It's not like a script, it's not like a uh, bunch of statements that are executed one after another. There is a model, there is a different way to handle CSS. Right, so it's my intention today to show you how CSS connects with JavaScript or HTML and then how this rendering happens within the browser, given the time, right? And I'll do my best to do that. So, <coughs> this is one part of it. There are other parts to it. Let's take a look at a few examples, right? So, as I take my you know, these are good examples of simple examples of CSS animations, right? CSS transitions or transformations. You can see this is fairly very simple in CSS to do. You don't need to be a uh, programmer to do all these things. The full effects that come pretty neat, pretty fast, right? So I want to draw your attention to that. They're not slow. They're pretty fast. Why is it so? Right? So there are various examples. You can go to the browser. You can go to the your favorite, uh, you know, search engine, and then you can see various things happening. Right? Two things. So this doesn't involve JavaScript at all. Right? All this involves CSS. So when people look at a web page these days, it's very difficult to say. Uh, whether it uses jQuery animations, you know, jQuery based transitions, or it's using just CSS based uh, transitions and transformations. So, basic idea is that if you use modern browsers like Chrome, recent builds, or Firefox, recent builds, you have a lot of these things is available for you. So, you can always do, uh, you can always render your content in a different way on the recent browsers and in a different way on the old browsers. Okay, let's go back to our. Uh, slides right now, right? It doesn't make much sense after those examples. <clears throat> so some of the things that are of interest to us when we start looking at how browsers do it uh, is that most of these browsers except in Firefox or where are uh, I, they all use the web code engine, right? Uh, the same that Apple uses or the one that Apple contributed. So this web code engine is the one that takes care of CSS running. Right? It takes care of JavaScript, it takes care of HTML parsing, and it also takes care of uh, CSS thing. So in order to play around with uh, CSS, if I have to show you some examples, there are a few things that you should know. Uh, with JavaScript, it's a programming language. You should know how the control flow works, how you organize your programs, as Sunil was saying, closures and other things. Uh, but with CSS, the model is fairly simple. It's kind of aspect oriented. You need to think in a different way. 
you say okay this is this is my content and i want to render it in a particular way depending on the media size or the media type so as i showed you uh, a few minutes ago if the screen size is uh, 320 480 then it looks different right if it is a larger screen it looks different thing so essentially what we need to think about is what's my media size what's the browser window size and what is it that i want to show and then how do i show it now we need to be able to specify this out of html right we should not be putting this the styling thing within html if that's the case then we would be breaking the modularity so the whole idea behind this uh, design is that you keep your content in one way in one place you keep your style sheets in another place and then have a mechanism to combine both that's what browsers do so we need to be able to specify that this content should be styled <coughs> in this way right so that that link should be minimal of course there is you should specify that somewhere sometime but then the way we specify should be so minimal that you <coughs> are able to connect and then put the styles together so there are only few things that uh, we must learn when we go to css one is called the box model uh, that is of interest to us today and the z order uh, i'll show you a couple of examples i hope i'll be able to do that uh, as i talk transparency and some of the animations that we saw right <coughs> so let's go back and uh, see an example so i have something ready for you okay so i use chrome this works with uh, mozilla or firefox also so i don't want to switch between those two because confuse me as i present so let's look at this simple you know uh, html so there are two things as you see there <coughs> there are two boxes which one appears on the other so the basic idea is that so i bring up this developer console or i can uh, this you can bring up by i hope you know uh, from users know this so you go or for all those people who do not know it you go here and there is a tools to to mark and okay tools and then say any one of these right uh, so i just i just say control shift j so i use the shortcut right so it comes up there so if you see it here uh, it's a very simple thing to thing as we were saying you click on your right click on your element and say inspect element it shows you right this is a great place to start debugging your pages or start debugging your css or the content itself so you can go there and say that okay there is a style here. right now what i have done is i have mixed this with html itself so that it becomes easier to play around okay so there are two boxes here this is first box and this is the second box let me click on this and say inspect element right so i see certain properties here <coughs> computer style and the element style so this is what we are talking about style sheets styles so we set styles on the elements let's just go into uh, what's good about what's great about these browsers these days is that they allow us to interactively you know modify some of these styles and we can immediately see how that change in style impacts the rendering right so that way we will be able to debug it quickly so for example uh this is the div i i i hope you know divs and the basic elements you know so the box model which i was talking about whenever we use a div in a markup it says that a new box should appear so in css there is only one thing there are only two things one is a box and the content within it in line content so when we say div we create a basic block basic box in which the content flows so uh go here and then say for example uh, let's play around with the uh, zero so we might say something like uh, zero so suddenly it disappears essentially it's the order for all those people who know a little bit of open gl and things like that you know uh, z is the depth part of it so from how far is it the from the eye you know, when you look at a pinhole camera so uh, essentially it means larger number will mean that if they are closer to you uh, positive numbers negative numbers will be or smaller numbers will be it's away from you so uh the z index of this is 
2, right? I set it to 0, so it went back. I can go back and set it to 3, and it comes forward. Now, uh, why am I harping on this? The idea is now, you set a style on the element, on the div box, which may be showing, right now it's just showing the text that it's a div box and then that its background color is red, but it could be any content. So by controlling the Z order, it either goes back or comes you know, above the other content. If you look at it from the browser's perspective, right? So for us, it was just going and changing some styles. The content remains the same, please mind, right? The box is still there, the HTML is the same, only the styles changed. So when the browser renders this, uh, it some the uh, some content doesn't appear and some content is here occluded, right? So the browsers, the renderers' responsibility now is to see the z order of most of these elements, sort them in a particular way, and draw them from back to the front, so that when you draw it, uh, some of those elements do not appear. So if you think of it in terms of the implementation detail within the browser, the moment you change a style, the whole thing has to uh, reflow. For example, we may go and say for this new block, right? For this new block, I may say uh, there is an option here called display. Right? The moment I say display none, it disappears. So this is a hit to what Smashing Maxing's web page was doing. Right? This should give you some clues of how that page was reacting. So all that I did was I said display none. Another option is to say display block. It comes back. Right? Can you see that? So the HTML content doesn't change. The styles change. So what Smashing Magazine was doing there, as I was reformatting it, was that it was detecting, the CSS was detecting the size of the window changing. There is an option in CSS to vary the media type, to vary the size of the window, and then accordingly the styles would change. So obviously the browser would reflow the whole content. So this is, there is no JavaScript involved, please mind There is no programming involved. So this is, I would be entirely wrong if I say, you know, uh, I wouldn't be telling the entire truth if I say there's no programming here. You can view this as programming, right? But this is more declarative in nature. It's like you set the styles by setting property values. So you will look at each element as carrying around a bunch of properties and values. So you go and change the values, you can do that. Good thing about it is that you can change the styles at the runtime. So you can use JavaScript to change the style as we manually did it here in the console, debugging console, JavaScript also can select the elements and then change the style. So when you combine these two things, you get a very powerful uh, way to render your web pages, your content. Okay, so uh, <coughs> there is this small thing, right? I just want to show you this. So this is a basic animation. Uh, again, these examples are very trivial, but then it shows uh, linear. So this is kind of linear gradient that uh, CSS3 allows us. So you can see that the second ball, uh, the fit circle, as it moves across, the size increases and uh, it acquires a red color. So slowly, in a linearly uh, linear fashion, uh, and this text also. If you see, it moves. So how, how do I how do we do that? There is no JavaScript again. If you look at the HTML, it's just this, right? There are only styles that are getting changed. So here, for example, there is one of the options, right? Web page animations. Actually, the uh, animation is the standard property name, W3C standard, but on many browsers, it's still experimental in nature. Therefore, you attach some of those prefixes with uh, WebKit or Mozilla also, right? But then it's a standard uh, right now, so you can use uh, some of these things in your browsers, modern browsers. Okay, so these are the few examples that you know uh, that show us how CSS three. Um,
Hey, let me know if I'm. Five minutes? Okay, let, let, just a minute. So this is where we have stopped, right? So let's go. So uh, how do the browsers do it? So we just saw how CSS does it. What is CSS and how with CSS you can do cool animations without writing JavaScript, right? So you don't need to do a lot of things. If you uh, if you search for uh, many cool animations using CSS, you will get hundreds of examples. So you please, uh, if you are interested, you can take a look at it. So how do browsers do it? Uh, as we were saying, as HTML comes to the browser, a DOM tree gets created. <coughs> so the HTML content, which is textual in nature, right, uh, gets converted into an internal representation, a tree. And then uh, what CSS does is to create another tree that says that this is the content, but these are the styles associated with them, right? As we saw with Smashing Magazine's page, as you resize the window, the content remains the same, but the styles change. Therefore, the way they are rendered, uh, you know, changes. Which means that this DOM tree should never change, right? Only the render object tree should change. So this is how browsers do it. DOM tree never changes. There is always a shadow tree, even when we use, you know, some of the some of those things. So. Uh, this is for efficiency, of course, uh, and render object tree is the one which is actually rendered. But then, as we saw with Zendesk, you can change the order of these layers, right? You can bring it back and forth. So we need to also have what are called as layers. So it's a tree again. So within a div, within a block, there can be a render tree with different set orders. So the browser has to at least these are the three minimal data structures that the browser has to maintain. So just to quickly rush through some of these things. So if you get this HTML, you get something like this, right? Um, so this is this would be the long thing that you see. Right? <coughs> so this would be the render tree that you get as a result. For example, there are this is with reference to web core. For quite some time, I have been spending some time looking at the, uh, you know, source code, the core source code, and this is what you would get. This is the DOM tree. This is the render tree. So these are complex data structures in the sense they take a lot of, uh, they have memory, obviously, and this is what gets rendered, right? And then what happens is the GPU comes in. For example, iPhone, right, or all Macs, they come with GPUs. So, uh, web core will accelerate your CSS if you if you have the GPU. So on a iPhone or you know iPad, CSS is always accelerated using the GPU. So it falls down to open GL bar. So these layers, uh, some of these layers that are accelerated in web core today are you know the canvas element, HTML5 canvas element, the video layer, the web GL of your <coughs> And then these are some of the layers depending on your Z order. So compositing and blending happens on the GPU, which is much faster. So these layers, these uh, what essentially happens is each one of these layers. For example, when you say this div block is has a uh, Z order of three, it goes into a bit, bitmap of its own. Then you say this div has a bitmap, uh, you know, Z order of two, it goes into a bitmap of its own. Then these two bitmaps have to be Composited, they have to be blended together, right? That blending operation, if you think of, you know, the retina display, the number of pixels. So these two layers will have those many number of pixels which have to be quickly composited, which have to be blended. So if you do not have a GPU with software, it's going to be slow. That's one of the reasons why, with one of those examples I was showing, you know, uh, the, the filled circles moving, growing, and CSS3 coming uh, to the fore, you know, to the front. It was lagging, if you noticed. That's because uh, I don't have a GPU. It's not GPU accelerated. So software render would make it slow, right? These are the details. So should we go for JS, JavaScript, or CSS, right? When it comes to 
uh, styling some of these elements or showing the cool animations or some of the menus that you can create with examples that are there are tons of examples available from scratch. So it depends. If you have a GPU available, if you have a GPU, if you are targeting a phone like iPhone on which you know that there is a GPU, use CSS. JavaScript will run slower than CSS. Right? JavaScript needs to be interpreted. No matter how fast the engine is, uh, it still is a virtual machine. But with CSS, uh, you know that compositing, blending and drawing happens on the GPU which is a separate processor altogether. So it's going to be faster. So use CSS depending on uh, whether CSS is accelerated. So it's very difficult to say it on Android because as we all know, uh, there are tons of challenges with Android devices, right? You never know whether it is accelerated or not. So probably dynamically an Android application has to detect whether there is GPU and then set its web view or uh, things like that so that it's accelerated. The good thing about it is CSS is declarative. At the same time, it's not easy. Don't get misled thinking that it's easy. It's, it's difficult in the sense that you need to think of a lot of uh, things. And CSS cascades. That's one good thing about it compared to JavaScript. Cascading in the sense you can import more than one scripts and the newer script would, a newer style sheet would overwrite the earlier one. So you can have newer styles coming in. So it cascades. That's it. Thanks. Right? So, if you have any questions, come over. You are after the session. Right? So, feel free to ask. Yeah. Uh, in Android, I don't, I'm not too much into CSS, but uh, when you said Smashing Magazine that uh, only CSS you mentioned, right? There is no JavaScript involved. But uh, I'm sure uh, CSS can't change its values, uh, like display none or width height and all. Oh, yeah, that's a good question. So, uh, okay. sorry, sorry to. Is that the question or you have something more? Is there a question behind a question or? That's the question. Yeah, means. Okay. In so, how does it work? Okay. So, um, what happens is that I can quickly show you. Uh, there is a media declaration in CSS. Right? You can say when the media uh, width is so much, bin width of the media is so much, you pick up this type. I showed you one type where I said display none. Can we show it? Yeah, why not? Do I have time right now or should I do it? Good. Good? Okay. So, let's go to Smashing Magazine. Right? Uh, let's go and I need to pull up the beta thing. Yeah, uh, not inspected one minute. Control, shift, shift. I'm in Firefox. Give me a minute. I'm so used to Chrome. So if you go to resources, themes, uh, style sheets, uh, main, main CSS, this is one, right? So let's search for media. Right? Yeah, can you see that? Oh, sorry. Can you see that or you can't? Can you see that now? Where did that go? Okay. Yeah. Can you see this now? Can you read it? Or even offline, I can show you that. So it says if media is green and the width is minimum, minimum width is 500 pixels. Can you read? Can you see this? Right? Then some styles change for the list elements for the unordered list, right? So you can just copy this, paste it onto a better editor where you can reformat it, right? You can see that there are many media, uh, see, when it is 610 pixels, it changes its style. When the minimum width is 500 pixels, it sets up a different style, right? You can look at uh, the CSS declarations. 
So the way the browser is doing this, as the browser's window shrinks or you know uh, resizes, it picks up the right CSS for that size and applies those styles. It happens behind the scenes. So there is no JavaScript involved there. This is style. In other words, when the page is designed, right? When the page is designed, uh, the designer would say that okay, these are the media and these are the widths, minimum widths I need to have for a meaningful rendering of my page. So those are set style. You can do it dynamically using JavaScript, but it's not required, right? If you design it up front, then you can go this way. Have I answered your question? Is it compatible with the IE8? Ah, I am not an expert on browser politics. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not, not a, uh, so it's not an IE8. Uh, I think they're getting as much as CSS into IE10, but there are scripts, there are shifts. There are shifts that you can just take a script tag, dump it into your page, and it will detect if your page uh, supports it or not, and it put a little JavaScript that will read it from your CSS and do the math for you automatically. You don't have to do anything separate. If you are seriously into it, uh, try using Modernizer, right? That's a neat little library that detects CSS support and HTML5 support and uh, gives many features for you. Uh, modernizer is a very popular thing. So it was a Paul Avish. Google guy in there behind uh, you know, uh, modernizer, so you can use that. So you use some animation in that. Uh, yes. Walls, walls. Yeah. Yeah. So is it, are you using any framework, CSS framework? No, no. So everything that I showed you was plain, simple CSS. But you are using a web kit. Yeah. So I use, uh, see, as I said, these are already W3C standards. But then the way Mozilla or Firefox and WebKit implement it is experimental in nature. So you have to prefix that thing. Right? But then you can also use the shorthand. That means it cannot work in Opera. Sorry? Yeah, there is slash O, minus O in Opera. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much. I'm here anyway. I'm here today. Thanks.